We'd like to say good evening to you tonight, and uh, if I could just borrow a few minutes of your time, I've got some things on my heart, have been for some time now, that, that uh, I need to try to try to preach, and uh, I'll try not to take very long, uh, but uh, I, I, I guess I run the risk of maybe saying this too much, I don't want to get on anybody's nerves or bother anybody, but uh, I always want you to know how thankful I am that you listen, and some of the comments that some of y'all have made has just blessed my heart to, I just, God's so good. Uh, I wouldn't have had these blessings if I hadn't have just made a little effort, you know, and uh, I just need him and I want you to pray for me and I'm so thankful uh, for those of you that, that listen to this uh, post. And uh, I just, I thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, I just don't know how to tell you the blessings that I've received. And uh, I hope God's happy. That's what we want most of all. And uh, and I want you to be blessed. I really do. We're going through a whole lot in this world, especially right now. But uh, people just have hard times. And uh, this need to be uplifted every now and then, you know. And uh, I, wanna, I want you to feel something in your heart. I want something to kind of. Wake up in there a little bit, you know, and stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, I believe is the way Paul said it to Timothy. Uh, I just want you to be reminded or, of something that uh, that uh, when you got saved or some blessing that you had, you know, I want you to I want you to feel good in your spirit. And uh, that would just tickle me to death if, if just one of y'all get to feel something that maybe you hadn't felt in a little while and uh, it sure is encouraging this day and time we live in for to get something like that. And like I said a while ago, if it wasn't for God being so good, we wouldn't we wouldn't have that. When we get right into what's on my heart tonight, uh, there might be some folks that will be maybe a little concerned. We've been talking about salvation almost every time, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more. That's what I've got on my heart to do this broadcast, but. Uh, there might be some folks that would be a little concerned about, you know, is that enough? Is, is it going to last? Is it, is it going to run out? You know, am I going to uh, not have enough to make it all the way through? And uh, that's what we want to talk about for a little while tonight. And I know that it don't make a lot of sense with your brain uh, to think that you can bow down somewhere and, and call on a God that you can't see and... Uh, and him give you peace where all that trouble was. I, I know it don't make a lot of sense with your brain, but uh, the devil knows that too. And he gets to messing around in there, and you, we give him a little slack every now and then, boy. And he just uh, he just takes advantage of every little thing. And 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 some folks may be uh, doubting whether what they've got is enough. And uh, if you'll go with me to First Corinthians and the first chapter. In the eighth verse, it's talking about Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. In the seventh verse, it says, Who shall also confirm you unto the end? That word confirm means to establish, to set you up to the end. That you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's long enough. The salvation, if you've been saved, that you received will take you all the way to the end because this scripture says he shall confirm you to the end. Now, if it was some man on earth that wrote you a letter and said you're confirmed, uh, that you're going to be uh, you're going to be established from now on and you don't have anything to worry about it, then I, I, I would be the first to tell you you've got a whole lot to worry about if that's all you got. But when we get saved, it's not a man that tells us that. It's the good Lord that spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God. He lets us know, and that's how come we can tell people, now you pray until you know for sure that you've been saved. And uh, he'll let you know when you've prayed long enough, when you pray to his satisfaction and you meet his terms, he'll let you know. And that's just the beginning of it. But this scripture here tells us that he will... Take care of that all the way to the end. And there's a part of you on the inside that's going to be blameless on that day. I just wonder what it feels like to be blameless altogether. 
Now, if you've been saved, you're blameless on the inside. But we've also got an outside, and I can tell you right now, I'm sure not blameless. I, I just don't know what that would feel like to be completely blameless inside and outside. And, and we're going to get to know how clean and how good that feels one day after a while, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the Bible tells us that he's able to do that, to present us faultless before the Lord with great joy, I think it said. So that tells me that it's going to tickle him to present you, if you've been saved, uh, one of these days and uh, faultless. So it starts when you get saved, and he's going to take care of that all the way through. There's other scriptures in here, and I know we don't have time to get to all of them, but I want to take you to one over here in Philippians, also in the first chapter of Philippians. Uh, it's in the sixth verse. Uh, it says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. See, he began a good work in you if you've got saved. He started something in there. He's the one that's working, doing that. He, he, he just started something, and he said he's going to perform it. Uh until the day of Jesus Christ. That's when the Lord comes back. And Paul said he was confident of this very thing, that he, the Lord, which hath begun a good work in you, will perform it. I am so thankful uh, that he's taking care of my salvation because I absolutely know that uh, if I had been one taking care of it, I'd have lost it before I ever got off the porch. But I want to tell you what that word perform means. To finish it. So he starts something when you get saved, <laughs> and he's going to finish it. I guess maybe that's why they call him the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So when he starts something, he's not one of them kind that gets tired of fooling with us and just runs off and says, throws his hands up and just frustrated and thinks, well, I'm not going to deal with you no more. You've got on my nerves so bad I don't want to mess with you no more. That's not the God that we serve, and that's certainly not our Heavenly Father. He's got a whole lot invested in you if you've been saved. Now, we all mess up. We all sin, and we're going to continue to. Now, we don't have to, but we are going to because we're humans, and I can't get by, it seems like, 10 minutes without messing up some way. We think things we shouldn't think, and we say things we ought not say, and we certainly do things that we don't need to do, and the Lord's not pleased with any of that. But that scripture right there said he's going to finish what he started. And the other one said he's going to confirm it until the end. Uh, so in view of that, knowing that we all mess up, uh, we don't get kicked out of his family. There's clubs and things that you can be in that if you don't perform a certain way, you know, if you're not good enough at this or smart enough at that or whatever, they're, they're liable to get rid of you because they can find somebody else to take your place. But in the family of God, you don't get kicked to the side because you're not good at something, and you don't get kicked off because you're not smart about something or uh, you didn't perform well or anything like that. I'm so thankful that we can have security in that. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, when your children mess up, your children... <laughs> You know what? They're still mine. When my children mess up, they are still mine. My daddy told me that when I was a young fella. No matter what you do, no matter what you turn out to be, you will always be mine. See, you don't just get rid of one of your youngins because they do something you don't like. You might not approve of it you may be frustrated you may think i wish they hadn't have done it and all that's just fine and well but you don't just write them off like they ain't yours no more well ain't you glad god don't do the he don't do that either 
Uh, we don't get rid of our own children because they mess up. Whatever we do, good, bad, or indifferent, we're still his. As a matter of fact, there ain't no indifferent. It's either good or bad. We're either going forward or digressing or going backwards or whatever. We don't just hang up in the middle and don't and just sit there. That ain't the way we are. So when we do good, he's pleased with us. And he lets us know that he's pleased with us. He just, it's almost like when he's had his big old arms all around us and just letting us know that everything is all right between me and him. Boy, there ain't no better time on the face of this earth than when the Lord does that for us. But when we mess up, he's still good to us. Now, he's took me up behind the woodshed several times, and he's laid the lash to me I don't know how many times in my life, and I know that if he had nerves, I would have got on every one of them, and I bet some of y'all feel the same way. But he didn't whip me because he hated me and he wanted to get rid of me. He wasn't disciplining me because he was being mean. It was because he loved me, and he wants us to straighten up when we do wrong. That's what a good daddy does, and we've certainly got one. He loves every one of his children. So rather than just getting rid of us because he don't want to fool with us anymore, he chastises us. Now, I don't know about you, but this is just kind of the way I feel. I wasn't any count. I was no good when he saved me, and I don't claim to be any good now. But he makes us acceptable in the beloved. It's not based on our merits. It's grace. It's based on his unmerited love and favor toward us. And I got to thinking about how that, you know, I might not be worth anything to anybody, and you may kind of feel that way too. But you are worth something to him. <laughs> You're worth more than I even know. I don't have an idea in the world how to tell you how much you he means to you. I mean, I'm sorry, that you mean to him. There's no way of explaining that. That's a love that I don't know I can, I don't have to, I don't understand. It's just over my head. But I can tell you what he did. He died on the cross for you. And he didn't have to. He wanted you. And he didn't have to. And he loved us and he didn't have to. And he saved us and he didn't have to. So that tells me that then he really cares a whole lot about us. And he's got a whole lot invested in each one of us. And I'm so thankful that just because we mess up, he don't just throw us out. He paid a great big high price for us. So you might think, well, I'm not worth anything much here on this earth, but I'll tell you right now, you're worth a whole lot to him. Because he proved it. One more scripture and I'll get off of here. In St. John's Gospel in the 10th chapter, in the 28th verse, if you ever was to think, That, uh, you know, maybe maybe he's not, you know, being all that clear. Maybe he's missed a few things in here, and I, I know I have, but I'm going to read you one more. This really ought to grab us and just get our attention. It says, I will give them to them eternal life. Well, now, if we stopped right there, it, that ought to be the end of the discussion, right? Eternal life. That's a no-brainer. Ain't you glad for eternal or everlasting life? That don't mean it, it don't start and it has an end. It goes on and on. That's eternal. But he goes on to kind of explain it this way. He says, And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. We are in his hand. Now, he even confirms it more than that. My father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Ain't you glad to just be 
in his hand. If you've been saved, he's got you. And he won't lose you. He won't drop you. He will hold on to you from now on. And you don't have to worry about whether you, what you've got is enough. Because I guarantee you, if you've got good old timey heartfelt salvation, that's good enough. That's all any of us has got. Now, I'm thankful tonight that I don't have to worry about keeping it, that he's going to perform it to the end, and he's not going to drop me. You know why he's not going to drop us? He loves us so much. He works with us instead of just kicking us out. He don't operate like the world does. And I'm so glad. Now, if you don't know him tonight, you don't have that security. If you died like you are now without being saved, you will go to a devil's hell. And I know that's harsh words to hear, but we don't want you to. And all you got to do is ask him and he'll save you. Just pour your heart out to him. Ask him. Go to him with every, with as low, as humble as you possibly know how to be, realizing that you need him and you, you just can't do this on your own. And I will guarantee you when you do that, he'll do what he said he would do. He'll save you. And then you don't have to worry about losing it. It'll always, but you may stray. You may get way away from it, but you'll always know there was a little place back there in my life that I bowed down and had a little talk with the Lord and he took care of it. And then he put you in his hand. And, and you'll be there from now on. Thank you so much for listening to this. It means the world to me that you do.